Thanks, Morgan. So good afternoon, everybody. Nice to be here with you. I'm Sujata. I'm the COO of Monzo, and I'm here today to talk to you about customer experience and why it's not the thing organizations should be focused on. But before I do that, let me just give you a brief introduction to Monzo if you've been living under a rock recently. We are the bank that lives on your phone. Our mission is to make money work for everyone, and our aim is to be the financial control center that brings all of your financial life together in one place and helps you make great decisions to improve your financial health, enable your life goals, and your overall well-being. We're seven years old, and we've just crossed six and a half million customers, and we continue to grow rapidly and mostly through word of mouth. We have an industry-leading net promoter score of 70, and we were recently voted Best British Bank by customers. We're known for our hot coral card and our loyal following, so from a customer perspective, we're doing something right. And that's what brought me to Monzo. I'm not a founder. I joined two years ago in the pandemic, at, so it was kind of rocking everybody's world. I left 16 years at a really customer-centric company because I was intrigued by this feisty upstart that had a mission to make something so fundamental changed and so transformational for so many. So when I went to do my due diligence, I talked to a lot of customers, and I was sort of hit by this tidal wave of advocacy and emotion. If it was the guy at the Genius Bar fixing my phone or the lead actor in a drag improv show that is a true story, people that don't have any business caring about their bank would wax poetic to me about how important Monzo was to them, how much it had changed their lives, how connected they felt to the company, and how proud they were to be a customer. I was intrigued, and I tried for ages to reverse engineer the brand to figure out the secret of that customer love, and when I couldn't, I decided to join the movement. So two years on, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've learned. And a little spoiler alert, it's about customer connection. OK, so I did say I'd start talking to you about customer experience. And if you're an executive today, you are besieged, your inbox is besieged with emails about customer experience. This is a couple of examples of just last week in my inbox alone. You'll get emails about testimonials and frameworks and tools and master classes. It's endless. And those are all great things, and you should look at them. But if you follow that roadmap for customer love, you're just going to fall short because it misses the meta point. So if it's not customer experience, then what is it? Well. Community's having a bit of a moment right now. Um, in fact, I got last week a message in my inbox from a top global consulting firm, and the title was a bunch of research they'd done, and it said, community flywheels are the secret for the next great brand. So I'm American. I call that jumping the shark. That's when you know a concept has jumped the shark, when a top global consulting firm tells you their secret. Um, community is definitely a buzzword that a lot of companies are using today to kind of signpost or signal that they're listening to customers. But again, it's insufficient. It's not just about high-fiving your friend on your at-home bike, or posting product suggestions in a community thread, or liking, sharing, or commenting on a piece of content on TikTok. It goes much deeper and more fundamental. You have to look a bit deeper. And to build sustainable and exceptional customer advocacy, it's not just about customer experience, although that's important. It's not about community, although that's critical. It's something much more fundamental. It's about customer connection. So customer connection really needs to be your North Star. And at Monzo, it is for us, and we've given that true meaning and purpose, even as we've grown to more than 2,500 customers. So what I'd like to spend the rest of my time together here today with you to talk about is, one, talk about how we did that and fostered customer connection in the early days, then kind of fast forward today at 6.5 million customers and counting, talk about how we bring that to life today, and then share a little bit with you about how you grow and scale and, and do that through systems and culture. So let's start with the early days. Well, this is 2015. And in 2015, the founders literally invited customer connection by inviting customers into our offices. They would come in to co-create the bank of the future, the bank of their dreams, and pick up their cards and share some personal feedback. And that face-to-face -face feedback was pretty damn special. We also, uh, early on, had to change our name. Some of you might remember that. So they went out to customers to ask for suggestions. Over 9,000 suggestions came in here, or some of them, from 4,500 customers. We settled on Monzo. Uh, actually, the most popular suggestion at the time was my bank, which I think speaks to that early connection, this feeling that the bank was created for and with customers. Some of the others on this slide, Mank, Mensch, I think were a little bit easier to disregard. Um, 
So one of the other things they started in the early years was something called the Big List and published that transparently on a whole bunch of channels for the public to follow along. It was literally a list of all of the features and improvements that customers were asking for, and they worked through them one by one and invited customers to see them. There's actually a done section on our community forum where you can see things that have been actioned, that real-time food feedback loop, again, fostering connection. And then one of the more fundamental ways they fostered connection was through tone of voice. In fact, if you go on our website today, there's a, a manifesto about our tone of voice. Um, and it was pretty, in retrospect, pretty obvious. How can you be part of a community if you can't speak their language? And so the founders worked very hard to build language that was inclusive, inviting, accessible, free from all the jargon and complexity that was needlessly plaguing financial services. They found a way to make money engaging and fun and sometimes even funny. At the time, that was a pretty radical concept, and it didn't go over too well with traditionalists. In fact, there was a national newspaper that published this, and I'm just gonna read it for accuracy. Just grow up, Monzo. You're a bank, not our best friend. The writer penned, I watch people on Twitter and Instagram trading jokes or the life observations with Monzo's social media team and feel a powerful urge to track them down and give them a good shake. Have they forgotten that Monzo is a bank? Well, they hadn't forgotten that Monzo was a bank. They'd realized they wanted to build a bank that was like nothing else you'd ever seen. If you want to make money work for everyone, how can you do that if you don't understand the needs of everyone and speak to them like a friend and connect to them like a friend to understand what their needs are? So slowly as the brand scaled and customers came on board, some of the cynics turned to converts and started to ask what the secret was, but they still had some doubts. Could you scale that approach? So let me go to my second point. What are we doing today? How do we do that at six and a half million customers and counting? Well, some things haven't changed. We're still building with our community. Here's a great example. We embarked on a core app redesign this year. Anybody that's ever been through one of those has had sleepless nights and knows how fraught that is. And it probably feels like a big risk to publish that out in the community and invite your customers to follow along, but that's very much core to who we are. Having said that, we've had to evolve our approach beyond that because we know that as we're bigger and more important to our customers, we have to be more meaningful to them. Our dialogue needs to be deeper, the connection needs to be deeper, and we need to be with them in kind of all of the stages that matter to them, whether that's times of joy, times of difficulty, times of need, and of course, opportunity. So I just wanna give you a few examples of each of those to try to bring it to life for you to show you what we do today. Let's start with joy. When you get paid early in the Monzo app, it is, a thing of beauty. It's a moment to celebrate and we know that and we are rejoicing with you. You get your pay packet, you pull it over to your pot and the screen explodes in a flurry of confetti. What a joyous moment and we're there with you to have it. We do that also when you pay off a loan or when you hit a budgeting or a savings goal. But we also do some things that are, might be less obvious to you. So let me give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, a customer called in to our customer servicing center and spoke to a customer operations colleague and shared that he'd been teetotal for a year. A week later, he received a card in the post from that customer operations colleague congratulating him on achieving that important milestone. That's rare, you don't see that in most companies today and you certainly don't expect that from your bank. So that's a joy. Let's talk about times of difficulty. That conversation about being teetotal would normally never happen in a bank over a counter with a branch manager, for example. We know that our customers are gonna share things with us that they wouldn't normally ever share with their bank. So we built a tool that's literally called Share With Us. And that allows our customers confidentially in a safe place to talk to us if their circumstances are changing. Are they in danger? Is their mental health struggling? Are they a victim of economic abuse? Something that incredibly spiked during the pandemic. We can allow them to share that with us and be there to support them and connect every step of the way. Similarly, in the current cost of living crisis, we know our customers are incredibly anxious. Uh, you know, stress and anxiety is through the roof. And we've gotten some feedback recently on Twitter. We got feedback from a customer that said, hey, I don't like the way you're telling me that I don't have any money in my account. That exclamation point is skyrocketing my blood pressure and is probably doing the same for many customers out there. We heard that and we fixed it immediately. That connection through that instant feedback loop. We know how you're feeling in the moment and we want to make sure that we're there to support you. Okay, let's talk about times of need. One of our core needs of our customers is saving and budgeting. So POTS is something that we invented. Although that came from another conversation with a customer who told us he literally wanted labeled POTS, um, labeled buckets to be able to manage his money better. POTS was invented and now 
customers create more than 300,000 pots a month. But we went a step further. We personalize that. We allow you to put pictures and words to those pots to connect to things that are important to you and those key milestones to make it feel like something meaningful and reinforce those positive behaviors, whether it's your trip to Canada or here, maybe coffee for everyone at Wired, which I might be saving for. Not just POTS, but we hear from some of our customers, for example, that are living with ADHD. Recently on Twitter, a number of them told us that they really love our money management tools and they make a meaningful difference in their life for things that they battle, for example, impulse spending. We got really curious, so that led us to commission some research. And what we discovered was a bunch of myths busted and a bunch of truths that have helped us work with charities and customers to con continue to dial up our impact. And we're just generally on the lookout for needs. So you might find us trolling the community forums, for example, looking into customer conversations, finding issues, and just proactively fixing them like Theo did here. OK, let's talk about times of opportunity. So I think a bunch of you know about our gambling block. That's not what's on this slide. but. Um, our gambling block was something that was created in conversation with customers that were suffering from gambling addictions. It was an industry first. We created a self-exclusion tool. Other banks have followed and we're really proud of that and we're actually lobbying to make that an industry standard. More recently, we did that with our Flex product, which for those of you that don't have it yet, is a better way to pay later. And what we found after thousands of hours of conversation with customers was that there was this great insight, life happens and actually what they needed from us was the ability to go back in time a couple weeks and potentially flex a transaction. And so when you have that unexpected vet bill or me, the leak in your bathroom ceiling that might have just miraculously appeared a week ago, sometimes you need a little bit of support from your bank to go back and revisit your spending decisions and that's what Flex does. Opportunities to co-create and get much deeper and connect on those insights and needs. I've just given you a whole bunch of different examples um, but the reason, and it might feel a little overwhelming, and I've only given you a sample, but all of those examples really create a million different connections and they unify to build something that is very rare in financial services or in any company, which is trust. And we never take that for granted. Okay, so I promised that I would end with how do we do that at scale? Um, how do you take those million connection points and magical moments and continue to grow as a business? Well. In a digital world, it's a mix. It's a mix of humans. Like, yes, humans are still important in a digital world. It is nimble product design. It is deep and always on user research. And it is thoughtful and empathetic marketing, servicing, and design all working together to create that feeling of connection. At Mondo, that's in our DNA. It's in deeply in our values, it's deeply in our culture. If you walk the hallways, every conversation you will hear will have customers inside of it. Every key decision starts with a customer. People organically espouse the views of customers. But as you grow, every single hire you bring in the door has the potential to dilute that culture. So if you're coming to Monzo as a candidate, you will go through a values interview. And everybody is subjected to that. And one of the things that we're looking for is how customer first is your mindset? Can you give us examples of where you've taken feedback from a customer and actioned it or gone above and beyond to identify a user need? Can you demonstrate that you talk with customers and not at them? And then once you're in the door, we light that up with a million different connections to keep it alive. Things like our uh, customer servicing channels, our social and community listening posts, or are always on user research. And just fun fact at Monzo, that is operating at a scale that you won't see at most companies. I think our Flex product, just our one single Flex product, gets 500 points of customer feedback a month. You won't see that in most places, and that allows us to be really relevant and meet customer needs all the time. Finally, you have to live and breathe it at every stage and level of your organization. So I'm gonna give you one last example, bear with me, but a few weeks ago, a, uh, somebody emailed me about a Ukrainian refugee that they were sponsoring who had become a Monzo customer, had gone to buy their first car in the country and had been defrauded online. Incredibly upsetting, somebody that was probably putting away most of their life savings just so they were trying to find their feet in a new country. We were able to help and then a week and a half ago I got an email from the sponsor thanking us and I'm just gonna read you a little bit of what it said to bring it to life. Your organization's empathy and support leaves me totally blown away. She went on to say how she was a huge advocate for Monzo, how she felt connected to us, how she could see the kindness that we were showing. But she ended her email by saying, any advice you can provide to these charities would be hugely valuable. Well, our head of fraud heard that and reached out 
and he's off to do some education sessions with those charities to help those vulnerable customers. That's when you know connection is in your DNA. And I said DNA a whole bunch of times, and that's because it really has to be authentic because that's how you build trust. People smell fake. They know if something is transactional or shallow or if, you're, if they're being sold to. It really has to be something that you organically live and breathe. So let me just say what well, I want to finish by saying. I really hope that none of you just continue to focus only on customer experience. That is great, but it will fall short. Disruption and customer love really comes from and within communities, but it comes from something a lot deeper than that and more fundamental. It comes from customer connection. So if you make customer connection your North Star, like we do at Monzo, it can be transformative. Thank you. <laughs>